Welcome to our video today on guidelines for distillation columns in fouling surface. This is a two-part video. There's an introduction and then there's part two. So part one is the introduction and part two is the uh, uh, more detailed Tell you a little bit about KLM Technology Group, based in the U.S. since 1995. KLM is a technical consultancy group, providing specialized services and equipment to improve process, plant, operational efficiency, profitability, and safety. Our core business is training. Today, we're making a training video. We have engineering design guidelines, which we'll explain more about. We do process engineering studies. We do hazard facilitation. We do engineering support, basic design packages, detailed design packages. We provide specialized distillation equipment. We have a highly rated engineering magazine called Engineering Practice Magazine. We do unit commissioning, correct distillation equipment for correct installation, inspecting, unit benchmarking, evaluation of process units. Today we're discussing design guidelines for distillation columns and phallic service. We also have a whole group of courses and training courses. We can come to your house, we can come in-house, we can do a regional conference, or we can do a training video like today. Advanced distillation design, operation, process control, and troubleshooting. Advanced process simulation. Distillation for operations personnel, for refining, for ethylene, for natural gas plants. Distillation commissioning. Over 50% of the incidents and 50% of the trade damage happens on commissioning. It's important for your operations group to understand how to commission all types of equipment, not just distillation columns, but pumps, compressors, control valves, distillation process control for operations groups, as well as other process units, ethylene plants, refineries, natural gas plants, chemical plants. They can be found on the website, klmtechgroup.com backslash training. Coleman's Handbook of Process Equipment Design. So there's a, at least 15 chapters. There's a distillation column, silizing, selection, and troubleshooting, 147 pages. Distillation tray hydraulics, 50 pages. Packing hydraulics, 68 pages. Reboiler design, 70 pages. Process control, 72 pages. Administer pads, 89 pages. Refinery crude tire, 169 pages. Refinery, refinery vacuum tire. 45 pages. Ethylene quench oil tire. We're going to talk in the part two. We're going to talk about ethylene quench tires fouling. 78 pages. Ethylene quench water. We're going to talk about ethylene C2 splitter. 74 pages. Ethylene C3 splitter. 64 pages. BTX tire design. Butadiene extraction. We'll talk. We'll show a picture of butadiene fouling in part two. And there's three chapters on natural gas processing. LPG, LNG, and NGL. So there's a host of... Uh, Chapters on distillation, plus there's chapters on pumps, compressors, control valves, relief valves. There's a whole, uh, over a hundred chapters in the Coleman's Handbook. Um, 80 to 120 pages, including design and sizing guidelines. As we revise the chapters, we're adding troubleshooting sections. The handbook can be found here, KLM Tech Group, backslash engineering, design guidelines, home. So what are we doing today? Today we're talking about distillation fouling. So this is part one, which is what we're talking about today. It has 28 slides. Part two has 67 slides. So we're going to talk about an introduction, introduction to fouling and some fouling mechanisms in part one. Part two, which is 67 slides, we're going to talk about operating conditions that affect fouling phenomena, me measures to mitigate fouling, case studies, refining with pitchers, ethylene with pitchers, MMA with pitchers and some conclusions. Designing master transfer equipment for a fouling service first requires an understanding of the fouling mechanisms, the process in which the fouling occurs, and the behavior of the process when the fouling is present. An understanding of these items needs to be developed in advance of designing mass transfer equipment for fouling service. So you need to go study how fouling reacts, how fouling occurs, 
and then you can come and start to design distillation equipment. So what are some fouling mechanisms? There's the vaporization of volatile com compounds. So basically, if you have a uh, crude tower or a distillation column or a uh, uh, SDA column or a uh, ethylene quench oil column and you allow the light ends, the volatile components, to vaporize out, what you're going to have left is a is a very heavy product. One, one ethylene plant in uh, Asia had the uh, quench tower, quench oil tower on ethylene, on hot steam standby and allowed all of the lighter components to vaporize out and they were left with a solid slurry. Now they were able to they were able to shut the tower down and heat up the piping and actually recover the uh, column. There's an ethylene quench oil tower in Texas that they put it on hot steam standby and they left it there so long that it actually made a tar-like substance in the tower and they had to literally take that tower out, order a new tower. So they were down for multiple months because of the vaporization of volatile components. Polymerization. Uh, there's uh, there's poly uh, any number of monomers. Polysty uh, poly uh, styrene can make polystyrene. Butadiene can make polybutadiene. So there's any number of polymerization, condensation. There's any number of uh, uh, products of condensation, sedimentation, precipitation, and crystallization. Uh, and sometimes they can be, typically we think as things get warmer, things are more soluble. But there are certain species, as they get warmer, they, they have more precipitation, chemical reaction, and corrosion. So all of these, all of these are fouling mechanisms. Complex fouling problems are a result of a combination of two or more of these phenomena occurring at the same time, such as in an ethylene caustic tower. So you can have corrosion in a caustic tower, you can have polymerization in a caustic tower, and you can have sedimentation in a caustic tower. So there, they can have two or more of these occurring at the same time, and they're always mutually reinforcing. Once you have sedimentation, you're going to have polymerization, you're going to... they 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 help each other. In many applications, fouling can result if the, okay, so talk about uh, vaporization of volatile components. In many applications, fouling can result if the volatile components, the light ends, are allowed to vaporize. This can be a refinery vacuum column, a refinery DL fourteen columns, and ethylene quench oil columns. And I've already talked about two ethylene quench oil columns where it happened in vacuum tires and DS fifteen towers. If the process is placed on recirculation with the addition of fresh feed with volatile material, the column can foul as the volatile materials are removed. You can actually end up with a very heavy slurry. You can actually end up with solid, uh, uh, solid components. Uh, in one example, an ethylene quench oil tower in Asia was placed on circulation and the viscosity of the bottom's product increased beyond its pore point. So it actually went solid. Uh, they were lucky that it only happened in the suction to the uh, pumps. It did not actually happen in the tower. Polymerization. Polymerization is the linking of double bonds to form long chain polymers. These products are undesirable in the monomer distillation column and can lead to reduced capacity in unit outages. All right, so uh, monomer distillation can be styrene, which later makes polystyrene. So I've got pictures of uh, styrene uh, fouling can be MMA and I've got pictures of MMA fouling and uh, butadiene I've got pictures of uh, butadiene fouling in part two condensation is where a reaction where two or more small molecules small molecules combine to form large stable structures extreme condensation is the formation of coke at high temperature and long residence times uh, so I've got some pictures in part two of coke being formed in ethylene quench oil towers. Coke forms when the thermal cracking removes the hydrogen and the light materials from the fluid and a layer of coke is left behind. 
Thermal cracking can occur in both the gas phase and the liquid phase. However, the most common situation where liquid phase cracking with low liquid rates extend residence time in high temperature operations. Eth examples of condensation can be found in ethylene furnace transfer lines to the quenchal tower and refinery vacuum towers. Sedimentation, participation, crystallization. Sedimentation is accumulation of solids that are deposited in low velocity areas in the process equipment. The equipment can include heat exchangers, tower distributors, distillation trays, random packing, and structure packing. If the trays are found below the feed point, this cause might be sedimentation. So, uh, heat exchangers, tower distributors. For filing services, I like VDOS distributors, which we'll talk about in part two. Uh, for distillation trays, there are certain aspects of distillation trays I like and I don't like. Uh, random packing, I prefer uh, grids or structured packing for fouling surfaces. Knowing the properties of the fluid in the suspended solid flow conditions and mixing effects, one can develop guidelines to predict the sedimenta sedimentation of solids from liquids. Petroleum fluid is a mixture of various components. Solubility balance among all the components make a petroleum fluid stable. Changes in this balance can cause precipitation from a petroleum fuel and resulting fouling, such as asphaltene precipitation. Chemical reactions in distillation. Desired or undesired chemical reactions can occur. In the ethylene caustic tower, there are competing chemical reactions. The caustic absorbs the CO2, which is desired by electrostatic interactions and the van der Waals reactions. Acetaldehydes can be polymerized by the caustic, which is undesired, to form first a, a yellow oil polymer and then later a red oil polymer, which can then lead to emulsions, can lead to fouling. Operating conditions that affect fouling phenomena. Residence time. Okay, so for distillation, we want higher residence time to give us higher efficiencies. For fouling, we want lower residence time, so it'll have less time to foul. Stagnant zones, I really don't want stagnant zones whether I'm fouling or not fouling. I really want to design the tray to move across the flow of the tray without having stagnant zones. Start transitions. Uh, if, if I know it's going to be a fouling issue, I want to have rounded corners. I want to have, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to have inlet weirs. Uh, I may want to have stepped outlet downcomers. There's things I want to have. And I don't want to, I don't want to assist the fouling phenomena. Emotion issues. Uh, I need to control the pH. I need to control uh, in the caustic tower, I need to control the aldol condensation. Uh, so there's there's a lot of operating conditions that can affect the fouling uh, phenomena. Stagnant zones. So all of these things can propagate vaporization of volatile components, polymerization, condensation, sedimentation, chemical reaction. To eliminate stagnant zones, a small slope may be added to collection trays and flow promoters push valves to distillation trays. In the higher fouling cases, sharp transitions the corners need to be avoided. Transition in corners are where the polymer in solids can seed and grow. Packed towers, such as feed pipes and trough distributors, may be areas for polymer and solids buildup. You want to be careful with your feed pipes, trough distributors. I do not like pan distributors, where you have the orifice plates, the orifices in the bottom. For filing services, I prefer V-notch distributors. I have pictures of V-notch distributors in part two. Emul emulsion issues. Whenever there's water present, such as ethylene quench and saturated tires, emulsion issues can create opportunities for fouling. If the pH, is, pH of the water is allowed from neutral ranges, emulsions can occur that creates mixtures that carries hydrocarbon out with the water streams and can uh, uh, cause fouling. What are measures to mitigate? First step is to thoroughly review the process for fouling potentials. What do you have here? Go look at the history. Go look at, do some research. Go look at your histories. Look at what you've had before. 
Investigation of previous applications need to be reviewed to develop the best solution for the specific process. There's a lot of uh, a lot of filing papers out there. There's a lot of information on the web about what to do, what not to do. You uh, uh, you can go study and come up with a lot of information on how to mitigate fouling phenomena. There, there are many different opinions on designing tower internals for use in filing service. And because distillation is part art and part science, differing opinions need to be proven serviceable in the field. Trays and packings can go, both be utilized for filing service. The key to a successful design is the proper application of internals, trays, and door packing. This paper is a starting point for producers, engineers, operators, uh, users to, de to develop, based on their operating experience, practical, serviceable columns for filing service. Thanks for your time today. This is the introduction to distillation filing. We have part two, which is uh, 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 more advanced, and uh, we look forward to... Uh, working with you in the future, and we can come do in-house training. We can obviously uh, work with you on some training videos. All the best in your career and life.